Quick bites. Welcome back. Blake, how are we doing today? All right, perfect. So as you can see, Blake is not here today. We had some scheduling to get a podcast recorded uh, before he was out of town. That schedule didn't go to plan. Um, so here we are. I'm here. I'm improvising. I'm doing the podcast on my own. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm just going to talk about a couple things that have been on my mind and Blake's mind, and just kind of things we've been going back and forth on. So first of all, Blake... Um, let's talk about, let's talk about the housing market. So in my opinion, um, you know, it's a little crazy right now, right? So prices are falling while monthly rates are rising. And that's just because the ebbs and flows of the economy, uh, of how the fed, you know, dictates inflation and how that all plays in together. It's just, it all works together. You know, inflation goes down, rates go up and then vice versa. So that's where we are right now. In my opinion, now I am not a real estate professional, so this is some an outside opinion that, that's pretty knowledgeable in real estate, but my outside opinion is that the housing market, we're never going to see 2020 again, in my opinion, I don't think, in our lifetime. I don't know if we're ever going to see 2.5% again um, with the prices that, that were once there. And also, with Boise's growth, I just don't think that's realistic, no matter what, even if we haven't had the market we had the last two years. Just with, with substantial growth, I mean, prices are are going to increase because that's just that's how supply and demand works. So in my opinion, I think adapting to the new housing market is going to be more important than looking for the best deal. Now, what that means is instead of waiting around for, I don't know, miracles to happen, um, I say get to work, you know. Go figure out a way to make more money, to add another stream of revenue so that you can pay that monthly higher payment um, if you even want a house. I mean, I know if, if you're looking for a primary residence and just need somewhere to live that you want to own, go buy a house. Completely fine. I'm totally with that. If, if you're looking to buy a house as more of a financial benefit, maybe now is not the best time to do that. And maybe you are waiting a little bit for you know, the rates and prices to balance out a little bit more. Um, but in my opinion, I, I think that I think that it's going to be more important to adapt to the new housing market instead of of waiting for the housing market to adapt to your situation, if that makes sense. You have to understand the situation from a buyer standpoint, from the economy standpoint, from a seller standpoint. It depends what you're wanting. Like Elliot... Elliot said two weeks ago on the podcast, what's your situation? Um, are you in a position where you can buy a house? Are you in a position where you do need to wait? Not even because of the market, but just because of your situation. You know, do you need to rent for a while? Like, it, it just doesn't, there's not a one size fits all. So you have to see where your situation is. You have to see where you're at. You have to see what your goals are. Um, and so I know a lot of real estate agents that, that are, they know what's coming and, and they're just going to continue to work and, and get through it. And I think that's all you can do as a real estate professional with such a cyclical career that matches the economy. I mean, if every time there was a recession or slow period, if every time that happened and you just were like, oh, this is it. I mean, it was fun while it lasted. Well, then, I mean, that's going to be the end of it, I feel like, for you. Um, but I know people that are pouring money into – bettering themselves and learning and growing and physically buying assets at this time. And I know people that are, are giving up and not doing real estate anymore. Um, and it's just like, you can choose. You can choose which one to do. Completely up to you. Just know that whatever choice you make, you will succeed in that choice. So that is my blurb on real estate at the moment. Um Personally, I'm not a homeowner yet, so there is some bias there. Um, I'm also 20 years old, so I'm not in a, in a rush to go buy a home. And like I was telling Elliot two weeks ago, I don't necessarily want to be house broke if I were to move into a house. And right now with my situation, it would probably be, probably be that. Um, so I'm waiting for the best time for myself to buy a house. So in other market news, um, a.k.a. the stock market, <laughs> um,
the way you have to look at it, I mean, wow, now there's so much more opportunity. There's so many more people to meet. There's so much more just gains to be made in, you know, whether that's a dollar amount or that whether that's a knowledge amount. I mean, there's just so much more happening, and I only see that as a positive because I go to these larger cities, and I see, I'm like, wow, everything's so, like, sustainable here. Like, there's so much more happening. People can actually do what they love and have a better shot at it. Like, I mean, here, as a videographer four years ago, it was a little daunting. I mean, two, I, I, this is just a random, this is just a random number, but like 2% of businesses probably only, only knew what video marketing was, let alone knew that they should probably use it. So with growth comes new ideas, new people, new business, just so much good in my eyes. Obviously it brings some bad too, but that's just what you have to take with, I mean, that's just the, the cons, the pros and cons of growth. So you lose some, you win some. So I'm out of breath. Um, thank you, Blake. Um, yeah, so Blake's on a trip right now. He was in Chicago last week for CCIM, and now he's uh, taking a little golf trip for the week, which props to Blake. I would be doing the same thing um, if I could this week. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about content, content marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing, whatever the hell you want to call it. It, it. It's all, I mean, it all boils down. It's pretty, this pretty much the same, unless you just say marketing. I mean, then that, that's like 1500 things. So I would say I specialize in content slash digital marketing, right? So I'm creating content for the business user to use on their platforms to drive attention, to drive awareness, to grow themselves and their brand, um, unless they are their brand, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so why do you need to use it as a business now and moving into the next couple years? <clears throat> and this is kind of what I'm thinking, because like I, I have to look at other people saying this and gather my own thoughts and opinions and understand why I need to be doing it too. So by no way, shape, or form am, am I the expert predicting everything, but this is what I see, and being in it every day, I see the benefits, and I see why people should invest more money into it. <clears throat> if you're a business, and you have no content, no anything, and you're just whatever, if you, if you can grow, and you don't have it, and you're feeling like you're doing great growth, then great. You, you, know, you, know, you don't need it, right? Um, but it all comes, it all boils down to, okay, well, if you can budget this much money per month, get this out of it and just add that extra leg of, of boost to your business and growth. I mean, why not? Um, so I would say like the number one reason why you need content marketing is because first of all, it's being adapted by everyone. So that's the thing. It's like a train, right? So the train's moving and that train is content. It's in the stage where People are experimenting, and, and a lot of industries are doing the same content. So let's take real estate agents, for example. All of the real estate agents lately are, are making the same content. The market's bad. Still good time to buy, yada, yada. It's very, everything's very similar. That's okay if you're doing the same thing everyone else is doing as long as you're on that train that is leaving the station. Um, that is the future of content marketing. And I would say moving forward, the way that you're going to be able to stand out is consistency and being different, um, which are both tough things. I mean, I've worked for Blake for 10 months and we have been consistent and it's been a push. It's been hard. But once I've started to learn things to help me, it's been easier to maintain that. Um, so everyone's content's the same right now. I think we're in that kind of era of content of everyone's trying it, everyone's adapting it, picking it up. That's a great start. Now, where that's going is people have to learn the the platforms that they're on. They have to learn the algorithms, which granted change every day, um, pretty much. And so that's the second part. I mean, first, it's the content. Second, it's it's the strategy, learning how to do things, how to grow your page the best, and how to get it on the eyes that you want it to, and using hashtags and sounds and trends and what content you should and shouldn't be making and posting and what times you should post. I mean, there's lots of variables to that. So it can be very daunting. 
And if you have the budget, just hire someone in-house to do it all. I mean, that is going to be your best friend. Don't contract seven different videographers every other month doing different work from everyone. I mean, it's just going to be a headache for you and probably you'll, you will probably be losing money in the end. Um, so if you can find someone that, that is a one man shop, which this is, this is pretty rare still, but for just to start, if you can find someone that kind of knows what they're doing with content and knows what they're doing with social media strategy, yada, yada, hire them in house. I mean, that's gonna be my biggest tip moving forward is with content. Like I think the days of freelancing are, are going to be, honestly, I think freelancing will not be a huge thing in content in the next five years, just because like with the amount of content that people are needing to put out, you might as well just have them in-house. I mean, literally working 25 to 40 hours a week just on content. I mean, podcasts, micro content, and every platform. I mean, you're posting like eight times a day the same piece of content on eight different platforms, this and that. I mean, there's so many moving parts to do it successfully. After everybody adapts video content, then we move into the innovation of video content. So that started with long form videos, brand message videos, people were doing this and trying that. Now we're moving into the micro content. I think this is the first stage of innovation in digital marketing. Okay, content, micro content is gonna be king. Um, And so now it's like, how do you do the micro content that everyone else is doing, but doing it differently? innovating in your within yourself within your brand within your business and then doing it consistently and doing it good i mean there's a lot of moving parts to it but if you have the budget to outsource that and or bring someone in-house it's going to be so worth it in my opinion when when everything is digital and let alone free mind you posting on all these platforms is free and you have like you can accidentally grow your whole brand just because you're posting for free on your Instagram. I mean, why, why wouldn't you? Right. So I think the next five years of business is going to be, is going to go to the innovators that are willing to adapt and take on content as a thing, as not a thing, but as a new way of, of business. I mean, it's not completely new. I mean, we're, we're pretty deep into, into like videos and, and social media, but the adoption of it took a while and now it's it's here being adopted people are adapting every day to it so i think content is necessary um, for your business to thrive i mean i look at older business owners that don't do content and i look at younger business owners that do content and i see the difference yes that older client or that older business owner might have connections that he's had for 30 years but the potential of them starting content is just endless. I mean, when you're posting it and it can be seen by literally anybody in the world, product, service, whatever you're selling, if you're not even selling anything, the opportunity there is just insane. So if you're wanting to make content and you are a real estate agent or you're a business owner starting out and you have no idea where to start, it's it's daunting. It's overwhelming. I get it. I understand where you need to start is first ask yourself, okay, what do I do every day? Do I love this? I want other people to know what I do, yada, yada, yada. Then after you do that, it's like, okay, my biggest piece of advice for people starting to um, produce content is document, not create. I mean, I preach this all the time. Do not create content. Document your journey, document what you're doing, and create content out of that. That's going to help you create more content, have more ideas, not run out of content, you know, X, Y, Z. When you start documenting, you start learning too, because let's say you want to document your process and you're like, oh, I want to, I need to learn what this is in my industry. Let's just take a 1031 exchange in real estate, for example. You're an agent. You're like, hmm, what's a 1031 exchange? Let me double dip here. Let me teach my audience what a 1031 exchange is while simultaneously learning what that is. So when you teach people, you're able to learn quicker and retain it better because you're reciting it. You have to feel confident that you know what it is if you want to teach someone else that info. Um, So that's a great way to start is, all right, ask yourself questions about your industry. 
And if you're like, what is, you know, in video, if I'm like, what is S log three? And I'm like, I want to go teach a videographer what S log three is. I don't know what it is. I'm going to go research it enough to where I feel confident to teach it to someone. And in the back end, I'm learning what that is and how to use it while also teaching someone and giving them valuable content. Valuable content is so important. People are worried about giving away all their secrets and giving away, you know, tips and tricks to the business. And quite frankly, I, what I say to that is, okay, so you're telling me you don't want to tell anybody how to do what you do because you're um, scared of them taking over or you're scared of people putting you out of business. And I use the example of when I started video, there's probably like three videographers in Boise. Now there's probably 20. I never feared any of them taking my clients because one, if they did take my clients, that's my fault. I mean, why is it, why is the client going to them? You have to look at yourself. And second of all, I was just confident that I knew that I was willing to learn and, and understand my industry that even if somebody knew more than me, I could still excel because I was being genuine. I was being honest. I was being a good business person um, and business owner. So when you quit worrying about what everyone else is doing in competition, that's when you really exceed because if you're just worrying about, if you're just focused on putting someone else out of business, you're not focusing on what you're doing every day to do that. You need to focus on your clients. You need to focus on your education and your knowledge and what exactly you have to offer to your clients. Um, I could probably blab on this for hours and hours and hours, but that is my two cents. You need to start content. Start with documenting, asking yourself questions about your industry, teaching yourself while teaching your audience. Just come up with ideas. Learn. Go to YouTube. How to make a reel. Go to YouTube. And you make a reel. You learn how to use your phone. Within three months, you'll be an expert. You'll, you'll know how to do all, all the reels. You'll know how to You'll have some algorithm knowledge and you'll just understand how to work everything properly. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, although video is very popular, still not a lot of people are doing it. And the people that are doing it are seeing amazing ROI and it's still into the it's still to the point where you can spend less and get more. I mean, there's gonna be a day where it's like you have to outspend everybody else in your market, in your niche, just whatever to get the results. But currently, if you have consistency and good content, you don't have to worry about that. I think personally, um, if you put out good content consistently, you don't need to spend $20,000 a month on Facebook ads to get the eyes and the attention. Yes, it's more manual labor, but it's going to be more um, ROI positive in the end. So that was my blab today. Blake, Thanks for all your input today. I really appreciated it. It was a great talk. Um, I hope you're having fun in Vegas, though, by the way. Um, hitting some bombs. And I hope you guys don't get bored of my face the next week on Instagram, because I probably will. We will be back next week with a regularly scheduled Quick Bites episode. If you have any questions for us, please let us know. And that is everything. We'll see you then.